Who would have thought that sugar, the much maligned product that is causing heart disease, diabetes, and massive problems everywhere around the world, would be the possibly be the answer to a new kind of battery that will boost existing energy density and capacity, and if scaled, revolutionize the electrical grid energy storage. Sounds like an impressive, all sounds a bit too good to be true, doesn't it? But it does look legitimate. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name's Sam Evans. A next generation flow battery design using a dissolved simple sugar has shown incredible promise for boosting the capacity and longevity of battery energy storage. If scaled, it could revolutionize electrical grid energy storage. There are some big advantages to flow batteries. The flow battery maintained its capacity to store and release energy for more than a year of continuous charge and discharge, according to an experiment conducted by a research team from the Department of Energy's Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. The sugar additive showed a surprising role, in fact, very promising as well, they say, as it was found to have boosted flow battery capacity and longevity for a grid energy resilience design. The researchers have written in a study published in the Jewel Journal, which is quite interesting because genuinely these kinds of studies, you see scientists say, well, theoretically, we tried this thing in the laboratory. It appears like it's really working, but we don't know in the real world how it's going to go down. The thing is, this has happened in the inverse way here. They've actually put the sugar straight into a commercially produced product and run it in the real world and found that it actually worked incredibly well. The experiment described the first use of a dissolved simple sugar called B-cyclodextrin, a derivative of starch to boost battery longevity and capacity. In the experiments that lasted for more than a year, the scientists optimized the ratio of chemicals in the system until it achieved 60% more peak power. During all that time, the flow battery barely lost any of its activity to recharge. This is the first laboratory scale flow battery experiment to report more than a year of continuous use with minimal loss of capacity. This could really change the market for flow batteries and make them a much more viable commercial proposition. While experimenting with other chemicals for flow batteries, the researchers found that cyclodextrin has this surprising catalytic ability, said Ruzu Feng, the first author of the study. The new advance makes the battery design a candidate for scaling up. The researchers say it's affordable, it can be done easily, and it makes a huge difference. Currently, flow battery designs rely on mined minerals, which are expensive, unsustainable to mine in some ways, and or controlled by only a few countries around the world. That's why researchers, including those at PNNL, who've discovered this additive could boost batteries, are seeking effective alternative technologies that use more common materials that are easily synthesized, stable, and non-toxic. Wei Wang, a longtime PNNL battery researcher and the principal investigator of this study said, we show that you can use a totally different type of catalyst design to accelerate the energy conversion. We cannot always dig the earth for new materials. We need to develop a sustainable approach with chemicals that we can synthesize in large amounts, just like pharmaceutical and the food industries. A flow battery is a type of rechargeable battery that stores and releases energy by utilizing chemical reactions between two liquid electrolytes. Unlike conventional batteries, where the energy is stored in solid electrodes, flow batteries store energy in external tanks as liquid electrolytes. During charging or discharging, the electrolytes flow through an electrochemical cell where the chemical reactions take place, generating or consuming electrical energy. The key components to a flow battery include two electrolyte tanks, one for positive electrolyte and the other for negative electrolyte. A pump to circulate the electrolytes and an electrochemical cell where the reactions occur. The flow battery operates by pumping the electrolytes from the storage tanks into the cell where the chemical reactions generate electrical energy. The flow of the electrolytes can be controlled to adjust the power output and storage capacity of the battery. Flow batteries are known for their scalability 
and their flexibility. The energy capacity of a flow battery can easily be increased by using larger electrolyte tanks, making them suitable for grid scale energy applications. They are also ideal for storing renewable energy from sources like solar or wind, as they can provide consistent power output over longer periods of time than lithium batteries. Additionally, flow batteries have the advantage of decoupling power and energy capacity, meaning that their power output can be scaled independently of their storage capacity. This feature allows flow batteries to respond quickly to changes in demand or supply in the electrical grid, meaning we can replace fossil fuel peaker plants with flow batteries, which are much, much cheaper to run and to build, and of course, much cleaner. One common type of flow battery is the vanadium redox flow battery. If you haven't heard of that before, I'll put a link in the description below to my video about vanadium redox flow technology. This uses vanadium ions in a different oxidation state as the electrolyte. Other types of flow batteries use different electrolyte chemistries, such as zinc bromine, iron chromium, or organic redox molecules. Flow batteries are still being developed and commercialized, and they hold promise for large scale energy storage and grid stabilization, as well as other applications in the future. This kind of battery technology, when we're able to use something like a sugar, a simple sugar, which is actually cheap, relatively affordable, and can be commercially manufactured through synthesizing this material is, I believe, a really interesting proposition because it could solve the answer of energy storage. Energy storage, yes, it's being built out at an incredible pace. Look at, what, look at how many batteries Tesla are building out, deploying at different factories and facilities for their own factories, for other factories, for other companies here in Australia, in the US, and all around the world, not just Tesla. You've got BYD doing it. You've got CATL doing it, but it's still not fast enough for the energy revolution. We need the support of different battery technologies Flow batteries, in my opinion, could possibly provide part of the solution that we're after. But let me know what you think in the comments, guys. I'm sure there's some of you out there that are even working on this flow battery technology. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.